Welcome back to another lecture in the Engineering Design Modeling and Graphics series. Before viewing this lecture, you should have already read and studied the chapter or chapters in your Engineering Graphics book that discuss manual drawing techniques and the tools commonly used to create manual hand-drawn orthographic views. It is in these chapters that you will discover how each line added to a drawing conveys a precise message. In addition, the various line types or styles have assigned names, appearances, and standard meanings. Assuming you are prepared, let's begin today's lecture, Standard Line Types. What do we mean when we use the phrase standard line types. It is the various different styles of lines used on technical or engineering drawings. Each style of line has a standard name, line thickness, pattern, and meaning it conveys when used correctly. These styles or line patterns are endorsed with minor variations by both the American ASME and international ISO standards. Of the 15 or so line types we will be covering in this lecture, the most important line type is the object or visible line. It is a solid thick line used to represent all visible edges or silhouettes of an object projected onto an orthographic view plane. Orthographic viewing planes are the glass box faces we discussed in a previous lecture that covered first and third angle projection. This illustration shows the three orthographic views of the object pictured in the right upper corner. Notice all of the lines drawn in the top, front, and right views are solid and thick, representing the projected edges of the 3D object. As a side note, if the object were cylindrical, as opposed to rectangular like this part, then its orthographic projection would show its silhouette as a solid, thick object lines. Equally important are the dashed or hidden lines, provided they add clarity to the orthographic views. These lines are thin and comprised of a series of short dashes that indicate hidden edges, corners, or silhouettes of surfaces not visible in a particular view. Notice the horizontal and vertical dashed lines in the front view. These lines add clarity showing the size and shape of the hidden rectangular notch. A horizontal dashed line has been added to the right view, clarifying that the raised portion of the block does not extend all the way to the left vertical face of the base block. Extension lines are thin, solid lines used to extend the edges, faces, and corners of a geometric feature. These lines are used to indicate the starting and end point of a given dimension. Since dimensioning to a hidden line is considered bad practice, rarely will you see or create an extension line that extends from the end of a dashed line. Also, in the ASME standard, a small gap is required between the object line and the corresponding extension line as illustrated in this figure. The dimension line is a thin, solid line with arrows. As defined in the ASME standard, dimensioning lines will generally have space where the actual dimension value is placed. However, notice in this illustration some of the dimension lines have gaps while others do not. If the value of the dimension line is too large to fit between the extension line, then the value and or arrows are placed outside the extension lines, 
The middle and right red arrows point to examples of these dimensions. Leader lines are solid thin lines that terminate with either an arrow or a dot as illustrated in this figure. When annotating a surface, the dot terminator is used, being placed on the white space of the surface being annotated. When dimensioning or annotating an edge of a feature, the arrow terminator is used and the arrow touches the object line. In the ASME standard, leaders generally have a horizontal shoulder that connects to the beginning or end of a horizontally written annotation. However, in the ISO standard, leaders are generally shoulderless and the annotation is written at the same angle or orientation as the leader. Center lines or center points are another important line type. These lines are thin and made up of a series of alternating long, short, long dashes. Center lines are used to denote an axis of rotation, whereas a center point is used to mark the center location of a hole or feature. Symmetry lines use as their base a standard thin center line, but add two thick track marks at each end of the center line. The symmetry line has two different applications. The first application is where just half of the orthographic view is provided, stopping abruptly at the symmetry line as illustrated in this figure. The other application is for use in half image dimensioning. We will discuss more on this topic in a later lecture. The phantom line is a thin line comprised of alternating long, short, short, long dashes. Its two principal uses are illustrated in this figure. First, look at the left object. Notice how the outline of the object has been copied and rotated to its alternate position and all visible object lines of this copy were replaced with thin phantom lines. Next, look at the right or hacksaw looking object. Notice how many of the teeth of the blade have been replaced with a phantom line. So, in summary, Phantom lines show alternate positions or indicate a repeated but not drawn set of features. In the American ASME standard, the cutting plane line has two different styles. Both of these line styles are thick. One uses an alternating pattern of long, short, long dashes, like a thickened center line and the other uses a pattern of long dashes. Either cutting plane pattern uses arrows to indicate the direction one should view the section. So in the top view, I've used the thickened center line pattern, and in the front view, you can see the cutting plane line made from long dashes. Cutting plane lines are used to indicate where a cut ha has been taken to expose internal features of a part being drawn in a projected orthographic view. To help illustrate what surfaces have been cut, exposed, in the projected orthographic view, it is appropriate to show lining, sometimes called crosshatching, of these cut or section surfaces. This is done by using section lines where the default pattern is thin angled parallel lines as shown in this feature. However, the graphic standards define many different patterns based on the material the part is made from. The viewing plane line is in appearance a copy of the cutting plane line. However, its use is to indicate the direction and extents of the partial view being specified. 
Look at the figure. Notice how the top view is a partial view showing the rectangular feature and its opening that will need dimensioning. Break lines come in a number of styles. This figure illustrates the use of a short break line, a thick, free-formed, wavy curve that indicates a portion of the part is not drawn or needed in the top view. Short break lines are used when doing auxiliary, removed, and detailed views. More on these and other view types in future lectures. Long breaks are thin, lightning bolt, or jigsaw type lines. They are used to indicate that a large portion of uniform shape material has been removed with the remaining ends slid together as seen in this illustration. Two different styles of long breaks are shown. However, one would never do this in real life. Only one style of long break line should be used to show the same break in two different views. If you were needing to shorten a part in both its width and depth, then use of two different break lines would add clarity. Stitch or sewing lines are used to indicate the size and location where top stitching of fabric is done. There are two different patterns that are allowed in the ASME or ISO standard. Either a thin dashed line or dots to illustrate as illustrated here. Frequently surfaces or faces or portions of surfaces and faces of a component being designed need additional processing or treatment. For example, the area may need to be a smoother finish or a special coating like anodizing or chrome plating or painting. A chain line is used to designate the portion of the surface or face to receive special processing. The chain line looks like a center line being comprised of long short long dashes but has a thicker width than the center line. Here is a standard line type chart borrowed from the Lou and Sorby textbook. You can find a similar chart in your engineering graphics reference book. I recommend that you commit a chart like this to memory. It provides the correct line names, patterns, line weights, however, it does not provide correct usage. Much of the correct line usage can be learned by studying the chapters covered in the topics of dimensioning, orthographic views, section views, auxiliary views, and working drawings. As mentioned a few times during the lecture, there are some differences between the American ASME, formerly ANSI, and the international ISO standards. For example, in the colored figure at the right, we see the two acceptable versions of the cutting plane line. However, in the ISO standard, the cutting plane line is a thin line, not a thick line, looks like a center line except the ends of the center line are thickened. Also, notice how the arrows are different between the standards. This brings us to the end of our discussion on standard line types. Let's take a few minutes and review some key takeaways. What are the 15 standard line types as defined by ASME? As you look at the figure on the right, you should be able to name each of the lines being pointed at by the red leaders. If you are given a list of names of line types, you should be able to correctly draw each pattern, including the correct line weight. 
Look again at the figure at the right. Can you correctly describe the meaning of each of the lines and what they convey? For example, what does the phantom or ghosted line of the arm indicate? If you answered it shows the arm's alternate position, that is correct. Thank you for joining us during this lecture.